Um, really, I would say about 10, I was about 10 years old, and I discovered my, my uh, older brother's drum kit. And I set it up and started playing along with records. And um, soon after that, my dad hooked me up with a great drum teacher, Alan Herman. Actually, we just got back together again as uh, co-produced this uh, DVD called Life on Drums, actually. And from there, it grew, you know. Um, a lot of influences. Uh, was you know, this we're talking 1973-74. I was listening to uh, everything from Led Zeppelin to Frank Zappa to you know the, the rock stuff, Stones, and Sly Stone, Rolling Stones, uh, and then Count Basie, Duke Ellington stuff, um, and then I got to Brazilian music, you know, and it grew from there. It started opening up to other cultures and. and freer type of jazz playing as well. Uh, I could, you know, uh, you know, Stuart Copeland, uh, John Bonham, Max Roach, Danny Richmond, Roy Haynes, Elvin Jones, um, Nana Vasconcelos, who's a percussionist, Brazilian percussionist, uh, Ayerto, um, of course, Buddy Rich, you know, Gene Krupa, that, that school, that, or that. Uh, there's so many. I mean, I just feel like there's so many drummers that have contributed to the, you know, the language that I use, that I've borrowed from, that I've learned from. Those are some of them. My, my thing um, is, uh, you know, less is more. So, like, in general, my setup is usually, like, you know, hi hats and, and a ride cymbal, but a ride cymbal that's versatile enough that I can crash and open up and make accents with. Uh, and so, uh, I don't know where those influences have come from. I mean, like everybody from, you know, <clears throat> from Elvin Jones to Jack D. Jeanette to Roy Haynes, you know, Tony Williams, you know, those kind of cymbal sounds that I love, uh, that finesse, you know. Um, so whatever symbol brings that out it's in, uh, for me, uh, I, I usually like the older vintage style you know, uh, symbols. And now Zildjian's coming out with this. I mean, you know, these these K's, these Constantinopoles, this new stuff that I guess it's Kenny Washington that has developed this one called uh, is it the hammered one, the overhammered one? Uh, Kenny d developed the bounce ride. Oh, he did the bounce ride. Okay. So the bounce ride, I love that one that Kenny developed and this and this overhammered one as well. It just speaks, you know, and I so I don't know, it's just is if I can I can dig in when I need to dig in and it, you know, it's this sort of a, a little bit of a darkness I, I look for, but um, to be able to crash and articulate, you know, the rhythms. Oh, God. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's, I guess it probably started when I was just, you know, I was in the first, like, rock power trio in my, in my high school in New Jersey. Uh, and um, from there, there was, like, a jazz band and marching band was kind of, like, really started to open me up uh, into different types of music and enjoying all of it. And I think, you know, really having the opportunity to sub for my first drum teacher in, the, in a Bob Fosse show called Dancing. It was a very hip show. They did everything, you know. I, I did a, uh, Gene Krupa Sing 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 on stage with Bob Fosse's dancers. I had to memorize the whole solo. Uh, that was a turning point. That was a shot in the arm. Um, and then really discovering Brazilian music and that whole feel, Afro-Cuban, Afro-Brazilian style of playing opened me up, and through that scene in New York, I met people like Bob Moses and Jaco Pastorius, and you know uh, Bill Frizzell, and all these people that were, you know, in that kind of musical community. So that was a big turning point for me, and that's where I started to develop like playing percussion and using the drum set uh, as 
seeing it as a percussion instrument is like, and that's where for me like Max Roach and and, uh, and drummers like that they kind of embrace the uh, African influences into the drumming, uh, and um, and then you know it's just sort of you know I guess in the Modesto Martin Wood period, out, coming out of the New York downtown scene where there's a lot of experimental stuff going on, John Zorn and the Lounge Lizards and uh, <clears throat> those bands, you know, opening up my ears and eyes to like everything, you know, just, just experimenting with punk rock and classical music and all these different genres and mixing them up and realizing that, you know, you can do that, do that with your drumming, with your expression. And that's around the period where I met John Medeski and Chris Wood, and we just we connected together. We were sidemen in a lot of different bands, and we came together as a, a sort of a democracy. You know, there's no leader, a real collective kind of um, uh, a band, and that was really inspiring. And so, we, from then on, it's just been developing really quickly. Uh, and so, I think those are some of the turning points. I hope I'm not rambling on too much. Um, yeah, this DVD, it's, I call it an anti-instructional, but um, it's, uh, it's like a master class. I don't speak into the camera. I'm kind of turned off by a lot of this. I'm talking to you, and step one and step two, it's like I'd rather, I'd rather the listener and the, the viewer be you know, in on a conversation that I'm having with my, with my drum teacher, and we're talking about lots of concepts and, and, and um, methods and ideas. Uh, what we what is you know, what what's important to us uh, uh, you know for drummers and as a musician and and you know getting more into the creative aspect of it the inventive aspect of it and we cut those conversations with all these different performances that are shot really beautifully these are really amazing images of the instruments and the playing and you know we really went out of our way to make it really interesting to watch it's a lot of fun to watch and it's not just for drummers I think it's just for any anybody who's interested in uh, in music and art in general um, and I think in a way it's just it's just a different it's like my personal sort of uh, you know way of expressing you know what I think is important and how you can do it on film and my reaction to a lot of the instructional videos that are out there this is kind of a this is sort of another another take on how you can educate people and turn them on to you know what what I think is important about drumming. There's a lot of footage on there. There's a you know uh, there's a, a feature, 87 minute feature, a mini feature about the history of our teachers. We talk about Joe Morello. I talk about Bob Moses. I talk about all my whole history of as a student. Uh, what I picked up, what I've learned, a whole chronology of, of, of my education. Uh, my first lessons with Alan, we talk about that. Um, and then there's uh, quite a bit of uh, extra performances and a little, uh, there's a little book tour, a virtual book tour through, uh, a, a video tour through my book, which is called Rhythm, the African Clave book that I wrote. There's a few projects. I mean, this drum video is definitely going to get me out, uh, out to you know doing more drum clinics and taking my teacher out with me and uh, sharing our excitement for education. Uh, there's a band that kind of came out of this uh, this DVD: uh, Stephen Bernstein, trumpet; Curtis Folks, trombone; and Marcus Rojas on tuba, and myself on drums. I think I'm going to develop more material for this band and take that on the road next year. And next year is Badesky Martin Wood's 20th anniversary. So we're going to be doing some special gigs, a lot of retrospective uh, music from our past 20 years. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, you know, and I'll be teaching also. So lots of new, lots of stuff coming up. But the new band I'm excited about, it's, I think I'm going to call the Wicked Knee.